Morning, uh, Misha, <laughs> Moshe Nitsan from Rice University, who will speak about scale functions and application dynamical system and number theory. Thank you. Okay. So it's a pleasure to be here. I want to uh, thank the organizers for organizing this wonderful conference and, of course, for inviting me. And uh, yeah, and it's uh, uh, so we all of us uh, having a really good time here in Rio. And uh, this is my first time in uh, not only in uh, Brazil but in South America, and it uh, looks very nice. <laughs> okay, and my uh, the subject of my talk is scales of functions and applications in dynamical systems and num uh, and number theory. But very big emphasis will be just first line, scales of functions and less applications. Uh, I will say a few words about applications, uh, but uh, uh, okay, I think uh, I will make some uh, general remarks and whatever philosophical remarks later. Uh, but I think we need to uh, start, uh, first of all, from the definitions. So, as I told you, the emphasis is, the emphasis of my, so for, we still don't know what is scales of function, but the emphasis is how to construct large scales of functions, one specific method, and I will describe how it works and, uh, and provide many examples. So I will, uh, I will start with the def uh, basic definitions, examples, uh, and then applications, and then philosophy. Okay, so first of all, so here are now formal definitions. Uh, I denote by B the set of real continuous germs of it at infinity. So this is very basic object, it is uh, continuous germs, two continu uh, functions defined for sufficiently large real x, and uh, two uh, functions uh, considered as one object if they are uh, concise for sufficiently large x. And this, uh, uh, this uh, set is partially ordered. We say that one function uh, is uh, eventually larger than the, uh, than the other, so I, I, very often those germs I will call just functions. If for one function uh, point-wise is larger than the other for, uh, for all large x. So this is, uh, this way the, uh, the set B is partially ordered. And, he, and here is now very basic and very simple definition, a subset of B, of all germs, is called a scale if it is linearly ordered, if it is totally ordered, if any two elements are comparable. In other words, uh, a subset of B is a scale if any two elements are comparable. And by comparable I mean either one of them is larger or they coincide. Concise, of course, starting certain point. So one can imagine many examples of scales, like uh, real polynomials, and one can construct much larger. But uh, historically, a pretty large class, which is a scale, was given by Hardy in his uh, book, Orders of Infinity, written at the beginning of 20th century. Uh, so what is the class? Uh, this class is just certain uh, functions defined by certain formula. So there is a variable x, you can use real constants, you can use algebraic operations, plus, minus, uh, 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 multiplied, and, uh, and functional symbols, exponent and logarithm. And of course, we assume, uh, uh, we want to assume that uh, this, whatever is defined, is defined for all sufficiently large x. 
So this is formal definition. We can uh, write any formula we want. If it, is def if it makes sense for large x, uh, then we have a, a, a function which belongs whatever we will call the hardest class of exponential algorithmic function. So this is very simple, but uh, the non-completely uh, trivial fact is, and may be remarkable for people who encounter this fact first time, that this class is a scale. Every, every formal, uh, any two formulas are, are comparable or which is equivalent to say that any formula that you will write is not oscillating. So before we continue talking about scales in general, I just want to, uh, to repeat several obvious definition, uh, whatever. We will, I will denote by B plus functions which are ultimately positive. By B minus functions which are neg ultimately negative by B, B whatever, wave, uh, tilde, uh, it is uh, oscillating function. So what does it mean oscillating function? Is not positive, is not negative, and not identically zero. For example, sine squared is considered to be oscillating. It has infinitely many zeros at infinity, but not identically zero. So B tilde, this is just, we will call incomparable with zero, is exactly a synonym of being uh, oscillating. Function is oscillating if it is incomparable with, ze with the uh, zero function. And this is a partition of all germs. Examples, we can think many examples. All those examples written here, in fact, they belong to the, the hardest class, exponential logarithmic functions. Uh, of course, given any scale, a subset is also a scale. One can think about less trivial things. But for example, uh, one can consider functions which uh, have uh, whatever, convergent Laurent uh, series at infinity with uh, terms uh, with a, uh, z to the power minus n having only finitely many n negatives. This is a field. If it is defined for all sufficiently large z, uh, z the functions which are uh, analytic or have a pole at infinity. This is a field. OK, uh, so now, as I told you, and I promised you at the beginning, I want to describe a general method to construct large scales. So what, is, uh, what was nice about Hardy's class? Oh, those are all formulas, formulas that we use, in, uh, for example, in analytic number theory. Any, uh, almost practically any formula when we compare function uh, belongs to Hardy's class. But, uh, but this class was defined kind of uh, constructed. We can, apply, uh, we can apply this function and this function and whatever we can get. But uh, what about if we want uh, uh, to add integrals of those functions or apply some other function? Of course, we don't want to imply function sine because we will Im immediately get oscillations. So what exactly could be done? So my method is I will make abstract definition, which will depend on some parameters. And this, were, and this would be very clear from the very beginning that whatever we get is a scale. What would be less trivial is to show that uh, then we need to work to prove that those particular well-defined uh, classes, in fact, they are big. So I will, go, I will be more specific. We address the following questions. I think I can skip it. To what extent it could be, I already say. What about Euler gamma function? It looks very nice. Generalization of n factorial should be, should be nice. Can we add without getting any contradiction? Riemann zeta function. 
solutions. There are many regular behaving solutions of uh, all kinds of equations. Okay, so here is we approaching this uh, way to do it. Uh, I will describe a canonical method procedure to construct various scales of function. So first of all, we fix certain property P, some, some natural property P that a scale may satisfy. What does it mean? Okay, this is, uh, this is uh, what does it mean? I can, uh, it's natural requ to request that it is, will be closed under addition, for example. Or closed under differentiation. Or closed under translations. Or you can invent many other things. So it turns out that this, given a property, we have a class of excellent functions, the way I will describe. And uh, you will see kind of miracles, like some simple, very simple property leads very large classes of functions. So I will be more specific. Uh, uh, okay, so for any property, we define the class of excellent functions. But this, the class depends on the property P. So if the property P is fixed, I will just uh, uh, denote it by E. Otherwise, I will show it dependence on this property P. So what could be the property? Could be closed on the various arithmetical operations. Could be closed on the differentiation. Uh, I can make shortcuts, R and F or ring and field, just uh, listing corresponding uh, operations. Oh, here is a word hardy field. Hardy fields is something which is, I request to think. It is a field and also closed under differentiation. So I request uh, two things together, but this is just one of the properties in the list. And there are many others you can do, uh, and you will get interesting classes. Uh, hardy field has uh, special significance because historically uh, this was uh, this excellent class for this uh, for this uh, class was uh, first considered in, in, in my thesis uh, I mean PhD thesis many years ago and this is theory well developed but you see this uh, but this property being filled and being uh, closed to differentiation it's pretty co uh, uh, complicated. And it turns out that uh, we don't have full understanding what is, I haven't defined it uh, yet, what does it mean, excellent, uh, excellent class. So let me do it first and then we will talk. Uh, uh, it could be property being closed on the old translation, on the integer translation. It, uh, one can imagine many other properties. So here I want to define uh, the class of excellent function, given a property P. So I will, you, I will say, uh, given a property P, I will say P scale as a shortcut for a scale which satisfies property P. Uh, a scale is called H scale. You remember H is for uh, Hardy field. H is, a, okay, H scales means it is a differentiable field. Field and closed under differentiation. And H scale has special name, just historically, it is a Hardy field. I think this is term was first coined in Bourbaki. And of course, it's motivated by, uh, b uh, by uh, uh, Hardy's class. By the way, Hardy's class obviously is closed under differentiation. This is we know from calculus that given any elementary, of elementary formula, we can differ, differentiate it. And we get maybe very long, but still uh, elementary formula. Okay. Examples uh, of uh, whatever, in examples of, uh, uh, of uh, hardy, 
uh, hardy fields, whatever it is. You, uh, I will just keep. R by X, it means all functions which have a finite pole at, uh, in, at zero. So the property H, the uh, hardy field, is very important, but mostly due to historical reason. Even for applications in ergodic theory and dynamical systems, there are many papers, whatever I will mention, some of those which uh, assume property that function belongs to hardy field. This property can be relaxed. In for, for, most, uh, for most purposes. And uh, okay, and in fact, uh, okay, here is the definition. So P B in any reasonable property of a scale. What, does, what do I mean by a reasonable? Uh, I don't want to define precisely, but I want that uh, Zorn lemma can be applied. That every P scale, P scale, it means scale satisfying property P. Every P scale belongs to a maximal P scale. So whenever we talk uh, about P scale is, uh, P property means it's closed under certain operations, binary or whatever if uh, we can make to, uh, whenever we have uh, just something like that, then obviously it is, this property is reasonable. Every P scale belongs to a maximal P scale. We introduce the following classes of functions. Excellent functions. This is the class, uh, this is the intersection of all maximal P scales. Every P scale belongs to, sa to some maximal P scale. We take intersection of all of them, and those uh, functions which are in this intersections are called excellent, or P excellent if we want to uh, emphasize dependence on the property P. Those are excellent functions, there are good functions. Functions which are, this is my terminology, and it's not used in any of my papers. This is just for, I started talking here the last two years in some talks. It doesn't appear anywhere. Well, good function is, belongs, what does it mean function is good? It belongs to some Hardy field. Oh, new Hardy field, some P scale. So, uh, good functions are, the class of good functions is just the union of all, uh, p, uh, of all p scales. I will also call, uh, uh, I will introduce class E prime. Those are, uh, I will call those are p comparable functions, or sometimes I call it uh, almost excellent functions. It turns out that, uh, that uh, every excellent function is, is almost excellent. So those are, I will, uh, so E prime P, I call it P comparable. And what it means, it's comparable with every good function. Function which is comparable with every good function is called P comparable. And here is, uh, yeah, this is just a repetition. Uh, this is just a repetition of what I explained. Uh, the following conclusions are almost immediate. In fact, uh, they are immediate. That excellent functions are good. Indeed, if, uh, what is excellent function? It, be, it belongs to the intersection of all maximal Hardy field, uh, mar maximal P scales. But intersection of P scales is again a P scale. P scale, it should be something closed under certain operations. Intersection of such object is again object of the same kind. So, uh, uh, so uh, uh, class of excellent function is intersection of all maximal P scales, in particular intersection of some P scales. So it is a P scale. Uh, so it is a P scale, therefore every, every function which is excellent is good. It belongs to some P scale, namely E of P itself. P excellent functions are P comparable. What does it mean? Every excellent function is comparable with every good function. 
indeed take any good function it belongs to some p scale this p scale belongs to maximal p scale maximal p scale contains class e because uh, e is intersection of all ma max uh, of all the maximal p scales and therefore this maximal p scale contains our good function and our excellent function whatever they are so they must be comparable because everything which is uh, contained in one scale is comparable i mean maybe i explain trivial things in too many words but okay <laughs> so we have excellent functions uh, uh, excellent functions are good excellent functions are comparable with every good function what else so uh, this I mean uh, could be usually it's uh, uh, once you just see first time definitions it looks like kind of tautology what uh, what interesting can uh, come from those definitions but it turns out this is a surprising phenomenon that even simple properties P lead to large uh, uh, scales of excellent functions uh, relatively simple so let's see some examples uh, uh, so those are uh, some examples uh, like uh, uh, even for some simple properties like being closed and the differentiation or being closed at differentiation and addition just uh, just very simple properties lead to large classes uh, so as I told you my thesis was for uh, done for um, a long time ago was for the for the property H when it is Hardy field and E was the intersection of all maximal Hardy fields I will say just a few words uh, maybe I will come back later again uh, about this particular property H Hardy field and what would be the excellent class of functions in this particular case from the definition it is only clear that it contains rationals immediately because every other field contains uh, rationals but in fact it is much large uh, uh, or they say this is discussed later no but I will say a few words uh, it turns out that this class contains the hardest class so all formulas belong when I'm talking intersection of maximal Hardy fields all formulas that I was discussing before exponential algorithmic uh, formulas are already there moreover this class under is closed under uh, um, the differentiation it is by definition but also on the integration it contains many solutions of various differential equation, equations and there is a big theory which I may mention several things later but first of all I just to for you to develop at least some feeling the way those definitions can work I will work with really simple properties P and see what happens then so uh, even proper uh, this is property one but let's start with property zero property zero means uh, empty property nothing we don't require anything so it means just a scale so intersection of all max uh, maximal scales is empty because uh, any maximal scale may contain or not contain any arbitrary uh, germ so this is really not interesting case because uh, the property is too simple in this case excellent uh, the class of excellent function is empty and the, uh, the class of good functions are all germs because uh, any germ can be can belong to maximal uh, to maximal scale by uh, I mean obviously so this is really not interesting property zero uh, property P plus or minus leads I will tell you the answer and there's easy exercise which I don't want to spend time that excellent function is just one this is the identity zero 
And good functions are all non-oscillating functions. But let's do something uh, slightly uh, more interesting that we uh, not completely trivial and we will prove something. If I make a property to be closed under differentiation, and that's all. Nothing about arithmetics, just closed under differentiation. So I will tell, tell you what is the answer. The answer turns out to be any, uh, any all linear combinations of e to the power x and e to the power minus x plus arbitrary polynomial. So what is nice about this is this is not completely trivial uh, uh, class. It's not just zero. And we have explicit description of this class. This is not the case with Hardy field. With the Hardy field, I still don't have a necessary and sufficient condition. Uh, there are many conjectures, but not, uh, not such an explicit uh, description. So this is explicit description, and I'm not going to prove it completely, but I will do some small step. Namely, I will prove that the exponential function is there. It is excellent. And the e to the power 2x is not there. This is, will give you just uh, some feeling the way it might work. So first I want to prove that e to the power 2x is not excellent. I claim that e to the power 2x is good. So what, how do I check that it is good? If it is in my p scale, in this p scale, the only operation I have is differentiation. So if I have e to the power 2x, over there, what must be? Twice this function, four times this function, and so on. And if I take the collection of all uh, derivatives of this function, I will get a scale because uh, all functions are comparable. And this will be closed under differentiation. So it means that this function, e to the power 2x, is good. Right? It belongs to some p scale. But now I make different observation. I take the same function, e to the power 2x, and add sine x. And I claim that this new function is again good. Why? Because I can differentiate. And again, everything is comparable. Sine x, sine x is negligible relative to a multiple of e to the power x. So both function, e to the power 2x and uh, perturbed by sine x, both functions are good. But you know, if two uh, functions are good, none can be excellent. And uh, no, if two functions are uh, good and not comparable, none can be excellent because good function and excellent function cannot be uh, comparable. So this is proof that uh, uh, e to the power 2x is not excellent. OK. Let prove that e to the power x is excellent. OK, this is just repetition. Proving that e to the power x is excellent. I claim that what suffices to prove that it is comparable with every good function. Because if I have p scale, every function is there. Uh, is good. And this fun uh, so I can add e to the power x and I still have a scale, assuming that I know to prove that e to the power x is comparable with every good function. So I add e to the power x. What else I need to add? It's derivatives. But e to the power x has a remarkable property that it's a derivative of itself. So I don't need to add anything else. If it is scale, I already have a p scale. So what I proved, that to any scale, I can add e to the power x. And this exactly means that it belongs to every maximal p scale. 
and therefore it is excellent. So I proved that e to the power x is excellent, e to the power x, uh, whatever, two to the two power x is not excellent. Uh, no, no, I did not prove. This is, I proved under the conditions that I know to prove that e to x comparable with every good function. So to, to prove that it is comparable with every good function, this is a very uh, trivial uh, calculus uh, exercise written here. Assume that e, uh, e, to the uh, e to the power x is incomparable with some good function g. It means, what does it mean two functions incomparable? The difference is oscillating. So if g of x minus e of x is oscillating. But then if I divide by a uh, positive function, it is still oscillating. And I divide by e to the power x. And if I have oscillating differentiable functions, here's everything differentiable, then its derivative also oscillating uh, by Rolle's theorem, right? And uh, so I get e to the uh, whatever, and uh, the final conclusion is that g of x minus g derivative is os oscillating, but g is not comparable to g prime. But we assume that g is good. It belongs to p scale, so all derivative also belongs to p scale, and therefore all must be comparable. This is contradiction. So this is where you prove that uh, e to the power x indeed is comparable to, to every good function. And this completes the proof that e to the power x is excellent. Uh, so as I told, claimed you, uh, the, the class, if I take property hardy, this class is large. It closed under integration. It contains many solutions of differential equations. And uh, this is, could be a separate uh, talk about what kind of differential equation. It, it turns out, first of the differential equation, y prime is equal any formula containing functions that we already know belongs uh, that are excellent. The solution will be excellent if it exists in the, uh, for sufficiently large x. There, there is a big theory. With second order differential equations, there are problems. We know that there are such functions like cosine x, which uh, y uh, second derivative is equal minus y. But it turns out if we limit only uh, say linear equation only for the for non-oscillating solutions those oscillation solutions will be excellent and uh, there is a big theory but my point is not talking about hardy field but talking about this method in general so i will not go in too much detail uh, e is closed under composition excellent functions for hardy now i'm talking about uh, about property hardy and I remind you, property Hardy is differentiable field, closed under differentiation, and is a field. Uh, e, it turns out this class is closed under, under the composition. The proof is simple. If it, much, it is much simpler than proving that it contains uh, whatever, uh, uh, any specific function like e to the power x. But uh, it is simple, but still it takes three minutes and I, I'm not going through it. It is in one of, uh, okay. So it is closed under composition, but we need to explain what is it. Those are germs at infinity. In order that it would make sense to be closed under different, uh, f of g to be defined, g must approach infinity. Otherwise, it doesn't make sense for composition of germs. So if we take all functions which approach plus infinity, what, it cl what is claimed that this is semi-group under composition. And uh, does it form a semi-group under the compositional op uh, operation? And, uh, and the credential question, well, what about uh, compositional inversion? So this is uh, my 34 years old question. I would like to know, because uh, for, many spe for, all spe uh, spe for many, many specific functions that I can prove that they are excellent, I can prove their inverses are also excellent. 
but I don't have a general theorem. In fact, uh, okay. So, for logarithmic exponential functions, uh, uh, inverses are uh, inverses are excellent, and it follows from Kowalski's theory. But uh, okay, this is, does not follow by my by my uh, by. Uh, for many of those, I can prove, but not in in general. It it uh, you need to do multidimensional tricks which I'm not going to mention at all in my lecture. But, uh, but in general, this is, uh, I mean, this, uh, the class E is very natural definition. It is very easy to show that it's called under composition. Under compositional inversion, it is very challenging. It's, I've, uh, I'm trying again and again and again every, whatever, two or three years, and I fail. Uh, oh, by the way, uh, on, uh, uh, okay, uh, uh, sometimes, uh, okay, whatever. Uh, we know that uh, the function, uh, the compositional inverse is good. Not problem, it is good. And it is also uh, comparable with every function which is good. And also it is differentially algebraic. Differentially algebraic function means function which satisfies algebraic differential equation, which I don't want to define, but it is, uh, I will say just a few words. There exists a polynomial of rationals which connects function and its derivative. Uh, okay, I, all this I know and all this necessary, all the uh, reasonable properties that I know excellent functions satisfy, inverses satisfy, but still I don't know the answer. In many cases, I can prove a specific F. Kowalski, okay, what I said already. So the class E is huge. It contains, in particular, all exponents of uh, E. So, uh, I'm sorry, uh, what are the other tests uh, uh, when the property was only differentiation? It was enough to prove that E to the X was in these lines to show that it is E, and here we do not have enough. Uh, okay, uh, when I added e to the power x and the property was differentiation, uh, then I know that I have a scale. But no, I know automatically that it's already p scale, it's closed under differentiation. All what I need to check is for e to the power x. But I know it is there, if the derivative of it is itself. In general, it is, it is not so. So we need to differentiate e prime. E prime means function which is comparable with every good function, which means you can add and still have a scale. That to be excellent, you can add it and to be included in p scale. And this is very different. And uh, there are many situations that I can prove that something is, uh, for certain properties, uh, uh, in E prime, almost excellent. But there is a distance to proving that it is indeed excellent. Yeah, but those are the very special, uh, simplest property. I cannot just talk, uh, this is, would be very, uh, very long. Okay. Uh, so we see, we can prove many, many functions are excellent. But how do we prove that something nice, but do, do they exist functions which are good but not excellent? Equi uh, equivalent formulation is uh, maybe there exists only one maximal Hardy field. This is equivalent formulation you uh, exercise. So do there exist functions which are good but not excellent? And here is very important limitation, one method to prove that a good function is not excellent. Uh, all functions in E, which are excellent, must satisfy a non-trivial algebraic differential equation. And uh, uh, the Euler gamma function uh, was shown that it is good uh, independently by me and Rosenlich. But uh, Rosenlich did not care about excellence at that time. 
And uh, to prove that it is not excellent, uh, I don't know to do it anyway directly, but to use facts uh, who, which was proved in 19th century that this function does not satisfy algebraic differential equation. Uh, I think it, the name is Nesser, or so, I'm not sure. So the guy who proved it. So the Euler function is not excellent for this particular property. This is not good. It is a very good function. I would like it to be excellent. And this is just indication that my property may be not, not good enough. I should take another property. Indeed, it is so, but let's wait. Functions in E are eventually real analytic. This is trivial fact. This is a conclusion of the fact that they satisfy algebraic differential equation. And good. This is a relatively real result. The class E does not contain transexponential and translogarithmic function. What does it mean, transexponential? Those are functions which grow much faster than, not much faster, faster than every iterate of exponent. And what does it mean, tra translogarithmic? Functions which approach infinity extremely slow, slower than or every iterate of logarithm. So it does not contain it. It was proved independently uh, by me, Luhmann and Dries, and somebody else. I mean, long time ago. But in fact, what I, what I proved is that any good function, which is either transexponential or translogarithmic, cannot even satisfy algebraic differential equation. So this would be one way to see it. But, uh, here is a natural question arises. Do there exist good functions at all which are transexponential? Of course, you can construct germ which grows faster than whatever you want. But I want that it will be good. What does it mean to be good relative to the Hardy property? It is easy exercise to show. It is equivalent to saying that if you apply any differential polynomial, it is non-oscillating. So you have to, to do it uh, uh, to prove something which grows very fast and there is no contradiction, whatever we have a function and all its derivative, whatever you can write, it will never oscillate. So do such a function exist? Yes, I have a paper. I mean, uh, I made a big effort, uh, uh, whatever, uh, it, it took me time. Uh, I, uh, if I have time, I will talk about it. It has uh, some significance. And its inverse, of course, is translogarithmic good function. Uh, okay. So with appropriate choices of property P, the class of excellent function may, may become much larger which is where this is probably more interesting. From, uh, uh, but uh, I'm recently very also interested when I'm taking really small, uh, simple property, like being closed under addition and all translation. The, this is wonderful theory becomes and many questions. Okay, so let me see what happens with my time. I need to move. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. No, I have to move. Uh, yeah, this is the illuminating example. Five times exponent is excellent. Therefore, five times exponent plus sign is not even good because they are not comparable. But I want to tell you if I have transexponential function, I will not spoil, uh, which is good. I will not spoil its goodness by adding sign x, whatever. Uh, I need to arrive to some applications because it is in the title. So I will say, mention just the very first one. Uh, given the function, it, it, it is stated for Hardy field, but okay, I will state it. Uh, given a function in the Hardy field which does not grow faster than polynomial, then I have necessary and sufficient condition for many questions that I may want to ask. For example, is, uh, is it uniformly distributed? Is it dense? For density, all what suffices is that it will not be too close 
to any rational polynomial. Because if it is close to a rational polynomial, the difference uh, is bounded, then it is trivially, uh, 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 asymptotically has just finitely many values. And it cannot be dense. But if it fails, it must be dense. Uh, second condition, it is for uniform distribution. No, it is no, the difference should be not just uh, bounded, but, uh, but larger than multiple of logarithm. So this theorem played a very important role in proving many convergence results, number theory results, and, uh, uh, and uh, generalized in many situations by people like uh, Mate Wirdel, Wirdel and Francinakis. And uh, I will not go into it. I will just ma uh, mention some uh, uh, forced baby result. Uh, so the metric measure preserving system when we have uh, both measure and metric and probability measure. And a subset uh, of integers is, called, is said to have full spectrum. If almost sure the orbit along all integers or along uh, this uh, subset of integers are the same. So this is full spectrum. And one can show that this condition means uh, is equivalent to saying that all translates of this set are Poincare sets, are measure theoretically recurrent sets. So I want to tell you there is a sufficient condition for uh, given any function f which grows the, not faster than polynomial for f of n integer part to be recurrent, uh, Poincare. Or to have for, for full spectrum, uh, for being recurrent, you need to be careful because there are, with polynomials, is delicate business. So I uh, include just the answer for full spectrum for which uh, the answer is uh, very simple. And this is, uh, this is theorem, which is uh, whatever follows from several of my papers. Uh, it, uh, I was uh, quoting it very often. It is uh, first uh, full proof is uh, in one of Francinakis' papers, but he attributed this result to me. And this is the theorem, that necessary condition for a function which is grow doesn't grow faster than polynomial uh, to, be, to have full spectrum for f of n integer part is that it is uh, 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 that uh, it is far from any multiple of rational polynomials. Okay, I will not. Uh, and this condition is almost uh, necessary and sufficient. The only exception, for, uh, so this is sufficient condition. Uh, but there are also trivial examples like functions, which is x plus logarithm, uh, what are very close to x, which is obviously also is, uh, has full spectrum. It is almost like uh, x function. So this is a br brief survey. I will not be able. Uh, uh, with Mate Verdal, uh, I have a, p a, p a result for generalizing, generalizing, it is uh, that much easier, uh, Bourgain result for squares for almost every convergence to much larger class of uh, functions in Hardy field, growing not faster polynomials. Long time ago, again, this result has been uh, improved in many ways. Uh, later, uh, there is a uh, ergodic averaging sequence. Uh, very recently, I mean, just this year, there is a very nice, survey paper and also uh, uh, by Francinakis who, pr who, who got uh, Simiredi theorem for function in Hardy field. And again, I've, I told you that Hardy field is uh, not that important. This property can be somewhat weakened. And there is a notion of discrete Hardy field that I will not have time to talk. And I, I have a big paper, whatever. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, this is a remark. The result generates is for good sequences of regular growth other than produced by Hardy field. It turns out that uh, sometimes we should not talk about uh, functions at all, but for some recurrent, uh, some recurrent uh, relations produce sequences which are regular. 
uh, have regular growth. There is notion of discrete Hardy field or whatever, discrete scales, which is uh, a theorem about uniform distribution, it applies. Let me do fast what we have here. Poincare recurrence, complete characterization, pointless ergodic theorem, uh, versions of semi theorem, varying problems. This is an uh, application to number theory. We know that if I take n to the power any integer, it is a basis. Everybody know. Uh, many of you know what is that. That if, if you add the set with itself, you, get, uh, you will get the whole integers. You, maybe you need to add the, the number one. But uh, it turns out that it is true for any function which grows not faster than polynomial. It is, uh, it, uh, it is a basis. You need to add one, and then finally, many times, if you add it to itself, it is, uh, it is a basis. There are many other number theoretical questions which uh, results that you prove for polynomials, you can extend to function Hardy field. Uh, there are Banach limits b uh, which are very much, very much invariant, have, very, uh, 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 have particularly nice properties. We know that there are Banach limits which are, uh, which are uh, what, okay, Banach limit is usually invari uh, invariant under translation. This is, after, this is by definition, but it could be uh, under dilations. Uh, if we take continuous. But in fact, I can prove that you can uh, make uh, composition on the right with any function in any Hardy field which doesn't grow faster than, uh, which is not trans, trans exponential or trans logarithmic. There exists one, ba one Banach limit which is invariant under all of them. So one uh, kind of Banach limit of this kind, but not precisely, was uh, constructed many years ago by uh, uh, I'll be Fisher, uh, but it was, uh, it has certain uh, advantages and disadvantages, his method. Uh, okay, I will not be able to talk about it. Okay, this is very nice. This is, uh, uh, okay, there is, a, there is a method how to prove that certain things are not there. It is not very strong method, it doesn't help. So for many cases, I cannot resolve it. So I, I, I did really very poor planning, I'm sorry. I think my time is over, and, but uh, uh, okay, <laughs> let me see if, uh, yeah, there are more examples, discrete case, uh, whatever. Yeah, let me finish something, this is very nice. What if I take uh, a property being differentiable being, uh, and being closed under translation plus differentiation? So I add also being closed on the translation. This is not this slide. It turns out that this class is much large. It will also contain gamma function and everything, all uh, an excellent function for Hardy field. It will contain everything, but, uh, but there are drawbacks. I, I cannot prove that it's closed on the composition. I know that gamma function of gamma function is good in the sense of Hardy field, but I don't know whether the, this new class will contain this composition. And, uh, and this is a very last remark. What if I do just field and translation and nothing else? It turns out that the function, gamma function, e to the power x, e to the power e, uh, x is there, but three times exponent is not there, and logarithm is not there. And uh, it is very nice uh, to describe methods uh, to establishing it, but uh, I certainly don't have time. Uh, there is also an analog of the theorem. Uh, just uh, those functions must satisfy algebraic difference equation. By analogy in Hardy field, it uh, must satisfy algebraic differential equation. And you can prove, for example, that uh, logarithm x does not satisfy al algebraic difference equation. And you can uh, prove it by uh, by, uh, by reducing to the complex variable and seeing that logarithm x has uh, 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 two bad singularity at zero, uh, at, one, uh, at zero, right, and whatever. Yeah, yeah. so I did, uh, I think I would, uh, uh, let me see, if any, anything important to remark. This is, 
yeah, there is a, no, I think, uh, a relation to Sarnak conjecture. This is, I'm not, uh, this is not very, really deep thing. I, I will, uh, I want to finish uh, by this theorem that some of you saw. This is theorem. Compact metric space, minimal uniquely ergodic transformation. Then for uh, any non-integer alpha, this sum is uniformly distributed for all. For, uh, I can uh, characterize those functions instead of an alpha that I can write. Those should not be close to polynomials, otherwise it will be fine. So this is, must be uniformly distributed. And this has something to do with properties of uh, functions which never, uh, which never correlate with uniquely ergodic sy uh, system, so whatever. Uh, so this, this is the theorem that I can prove. Extra random I cannot show because it's long. But this is uh, more or less it is uh, 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 whatever Sarnak uh, wants to prove uh, about mu function, I called super random. And extra, extra random when uh, the same property applies only for uniquely ergodic sy uh, systems, but uh, without any assumptions on uh, entropy. And this would be subject, I think, of one of our speakers today in the, uh, in the, I mean, later today. But, so, but he doesn't use this terminology. This is, I, uh, this is just my terminology. But, uh, but this theorem is just, now. I, I can classify those functions which you can add, add, and this is a uniform distribution is uh, satisfied. But by the way, I don't know whether it is true if it is, uh, uh, here is the assumption that it is uniquely ergodic. And for, uh, I, I, uh, I don't know otherwise uh, to prove here this. <laughs> so we, uh, what is really important here in the theorem that f of tn of x is well distributed relative to some distribution, doesn't matter which, doesn't, uh, doesn't, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm uh, I'm much over, and I have to stop. Yeah. Thank you very much for it. Also, maybe there are some more questions. 